Welcome back to another episode of my mom's recipe box. I'm so glad you're here because we are finishing up our Thanksgiving recipes. We've got, we're going to do two today, two in the same video. So what a bargain. And then we have one more left to do. And that is a delicious uh, honey and cinnamon sweet potato roast. So that's coming up. But today we're going to do a corn pudding. And we're gonna make a vegetarian gravy that you can use on your stuffing, on your mashed potatoes, even on your vegetables if you want. My dad used to like to just take a piece of white bread and put gravy on it and eat it. Yum, gravy sandwich. And I think my mom used to like to do that too, yeah. So um, just a note about gravy and being vegetarian. And that is, it took me a long time to find a gravy that I thought was good for a vegetarian Thanksgiving. Normally you're making gravy out of the drippings from the turkey, you're thickening it up with a little fat, a little flour, a little broth, and it's delicious. Um, when we went vegetarian, gravy was a challenge. And for a long time I didn't make it at all because I thought, okay, if my stuffing is moist, if my potatoes are the right consistency, we're not gonna need gravy. And I still kind of believe that. So you don't wanna make gravy just to hide dry food. You wanna make a gravy that's gonna really enhance the flavor of the food that you're cooking, okay? So I'm hoping that this gravy that I give you the recipe for today is something that'll really help enhance the flavor of your food, but don't use it as a substitute or don't use it to try and cover up dry food, okay? If your stuffing is too dry, you can always add a little extra broth before you serve it. If your mashed potatoes are too dry, you can add a little liquid. You don't have to make gravy, okay? So having said that, today we're gonna learn how to make gravy. <laughs> okay, so let's get started real quick. I have two pans over here and they both have about two tablespoons of butter because both the recipes I'm making today call for saute onions and garlic. So what I've done over here is I have finely chopped a medium onion and about three cloves of garlic. Okay. And I'm just going to basically divide this in half and I'm going to use half for my gravy and I'm going to use half for my corn pudding. Okay. And the oven is preheated to 350, okay? So we're gonna turn both of these on about medium, okay? This one on medium. And as the butter melts, we're gonna add the onions and the garlic and we're gonna give them a saute, okay? So let me get rid of this. So I'm gonna take about half here. And then take some more here and then just kind of divide it up. Try to make sure your garlic is, you know, evenly distributed. And I can't recommend highly enough, use a squeezed garlic or an already minced garlic. You can get them at the grocery store. You can get the pre-minced in olive oil. You can get the pre-minced just by itself. You can get it in a squeeze bottle, you can get it in a jar. You can mince your own garlic. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't do it, but this is such a time saver. And this time of year, you're looking for whatever you can find that's gonna help make things a little easier, okay? So don't fill yourself, guys, in the kitchen. Use your, your pre-minced garlic, use your, um, Use your prepared Brussels sprouts, oh my God. Get your squash pre-chopped, get your sweet potatoes pre-chopped if you want. Just don't give yourselves a heart attack on Thanksgiving, it's not worth it. Okay, so we're sauteing these, onions and garlic. And we're just gonna let these soften up, it's gonna take a few minutes. So we're just gonna work on this and then we're gonna add the other ingredients, okay? Welcome back. So I want to show you, we've been sauteing the onions and the garlic for the corn pudding and they're just golden. 
okay? The uh, onions and garlic for the gravy are still cooking a little bit. Because they're in a high-sided saucepan like that, they don't brown quite as quickly as here. So um, I'm going to swing around here, and we're going to start on our corn pudding, okay? So what I have in the bowl right here is an 8.5 ounce box of corn muffin mix, okay? You can get any brand that you like. So that's gonna be the starter. We also have a 15 ounce can of corn, and that's yellow and white corn. We have a 15 ounce can of cream corn. We have an egg. We have half a cube of McGee. If you don't have McGee, just go ahead and use salt and pepper, okay? We have one stick of melted butter. We have a bag of Velveeta. Now you don't have to use Velveeta. You can use any kind of cheddar, or if you want, Monterey Jack, if you want a pepper jack, uh, a nice sharp cheddar is really good in this recipe as well, okay? So, but you need uh, eight ounces, whatever you get. So I'm going to take the onions and the garlic, and I'm going to put them in the dough, or the, the corn muffin mix, I'm sorry, okay? And then to that, we are going to add the melted butter, that's one stick, goes in there, okay? We're going to add the half cube of McGee. It goes in there. We're going to add the corn. And that corn is like half drained, okay? And then we're going to take the cream corn. And then it goes. And then we're going to take our egg. And I did have to pick out a big old shell out of there, so yeah, that works. Okay, and then we're just going to give this a good mix. Okay, you don't need your beater for this, guys. And you can see that the batter is wet, and that's because this isn't a cornbread. This is a corn pudding, so it's going to be much looser, much moister than cornbread. Um, it mixes up so easily, you guys. I think I'm also going to add a little bit of freshly ground pepper. Forgot to put that in. There we go. And that's to taste, okay? Now I know I've told everybody who watches my channel the importance of every time you bake something to put vanilla extract in it. And we're not putting vanilla extract in this. This is really savory. I don't want it to be sweet. Now, some people make corn puddings that are sweet, and then you want to put vanilla in it, fine, because then you're also putting in honey, or you're putting in sugar, or you're putting in something like that. This is a savory corn pudding. I'm leaving out the vanilla. If you try it with vanilla extract, by all means, send me a comment. Let me know how it turned out, okay? All right, so this is ready to go. I'm going to turn the heat down on my onions. And what I'm going to do is you stay right there. I've got my baking dish, and before I put it in the baking dish, oh my god, I almost forgot. <laughs> we cannot forget the cheese. We're going to put about half the cheese inside the dough, right? So it's not really, you know, an exact science, but you can measure it out if you want. No problem. And we're going to stir that in. All right, and then we're going to take this batter, we're going to put it into this dish, and this dish has been uh, buttered, okay? All right, so let's get that in. Hard in the back of my bowl. This kitchen isn't really set up for filming. One of these days, I hope it is. Okay, so we're just going to put this in like so. Now, the next ingredient that we're going to put in here and it might seem a little unusual. Get that mixed up in there. Is we're gonna put in some sour cream. And I know you're asking, well, why didn't you just put the sour cream in the batter? Well, we want to get like little pockets of sour cream to give it a kind of creaminess. It's not you don't have to do it this way. You can just add the sour cream if you want, but I don't really measure it. That's the thing. So we're just going to put like a spoonful here, a spoonful here, a spoonful here, and let's put one here. And then all we're going to do 
That's not much of a spoonful, is it? We're going to take a knife, like so, and we're just going to work it through the batter, like so. Just so it's not totally mixed in, but you don't get like any big gaping hunks of sour cream, but you just know it's there, okay? And that's that. And then you're gonna add the rest of the cheese on top. I would even say this is more like cheese pudding with corn than corn pudding with cheese. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if you can see him, but our dog is right here, hoping, hoping, hoping that some cheese falls on the floor. All right, that's done. We're gonna put this in the oven and it's gonna be in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes, okay? And when you come back, we're gonna make the gravy. Welcome back guys, people. <laughs> I know, somebody just was talking about guys, you know, groups of people being called guys, and I've always said, if it's a group of guys, you say guys, but I don't like saying guys for mixed group. But I do it all the time, so I'm a hypocrite. Okay, so let's go back to the gravy. So I have the onions and garlic sauteing in this saucepan, and they're brownish. I think they're ready. Now I do want to point out that this isn't going to be a smooth gravy because you've got onions and garlic in here. So the gravy is going to have little pieces of onions and garlic in it. If you want a smooth gravy, you can make this gravy and put it in the blender and blend it up if you want to do it that way. Then you'll have a smooth gravy. I'm okay with little pieces of onion and garlic in my gravy, so I'm going to leave it like this. Okay? So what we've got here the heat's on low. What I have here is three cups of vegetable broth. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what's the difference between vegetable broth and vegetable stock? Well, I'll tell you. Vegetable broth is basically the juice of three vegetables, and it's usually carrots, onions, and celery. Sometimes it can be different vegetables, but it's almost always at least carrots, onions, and celery. Let's turn the heat up a little bit. And that's it. So it's thin, it's a very light color, sometimes it's translucent, which means you can see through it. Um, so for stock, for vegetable stock, you've got vegetables. A lot of times you have the whole vegetable that's just been pulverized and put into the stock. And then you also have ingredients like potato flour, sometimes tapioca flour, some kind of starch that's making the stock a little bit thicker, okay? So it's a little more opaque when you look at it. And stock is also a little bit more expensive than broth. So when you're talking about vegetable broth versus vegetable stock, my opinion is don't pay extra for the vegetable stock. If you're using it to make a soup or a stew, if you're using it to flavor a gravy, if you're doing these kinds of things where you're using it as a foundation or a base for another dish, or you're just using it maybe in place of water for certain dishes, you don't need to spend the extra money on the stock because you're going to be adding your own seasonings, you're going to be adding your own flavors, and if you need it to be thicker, you're going to be doing that yourself in your dish, okay? So save yourself a little bit of money and buy the veggie broth, okay? So let's get back to our gravy. So I've, cut, I've uh, turned up the heat a little bit, and I want to get it to the point where it's at the boil. And I'm also going to add our seasonings, which in here is a cube of McGee and uh, about two teaspoons of cracked pepper, okay? And we're just gonna put that in there. If you can't find the vegetable McGee and you're not vegetarian, you can use chicken. If you can't find it and you are vegetarian, you can use salt, you can use a poultry seasoning, you can use a vegetable bouillon, you can use whatever you want, okay? Uh, sometimes you might want to try a little soy sauce in this, give it a little browner color. 
Um, I'm not crazy about the soy sauce, so I usually leave it out. So now we're going to switch over to our whisk because what we're going to do is we want to thicken this up to make a gravy out of it, okay? So we've got the heat turned up. Turn it up a little bit more. You want to get it hot. And then what we're going to add to it to thicken it up is what's called a slurry. And a slurry is basically cornstarch and water. And it's cold. So over here in this little dish, I have a tablespoon of cornstarch and a little bit of water. Okay, so I'm going to stir that up and it's nice, there's no lumps in it. Now if you want to, you can use flour and make a roux. And you would do that before you add the chicken, or I'm sorry, before you add the vegetable broth. But since we're doing a slurry, we can put everything in our gravy. And the cornstarch and water can be the last thing. Okay, so this is nice and hot. So you're just going to pour this in and we're going to whisk. And we're going to whisk and whisk and whisk. And as you can see, it doesn't take long before it starts to thicken up. And what you want to do is you want to cook it for about a minute or two. Make sure we don't have lumps, although we do have pieces of onion. So there we go. And we're just going to whisk that up and whisk it up. And you guys, we have ourselves some delicious vegetarian gravy right there. You can dress it up with parsley, you can dress it up with maybe some thyme, maybe some rosemary uh, chopped up, you can put some herbs in it if you want, you can spice it up with a little more pepper, but there we go. Okay, so when we come back we're going to taste the corn pudding and we're going to taste the gravy, okay? So come on back. Hi everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. We are at tasting time, which mm. is like one of our favorite times. Mm -hmm. So what we have on our plates is some of the corn pudding and we each have a uh, half a biscuit and we're going to try out the gravy mm -hmm. with the biscuit. So if you want to start with that, babe, mm -hmm. we've got our biscuit. Biscuit, both up the gravy. We've got our gravy. Thank there you go. Kind of mush it around. Yeah, there. I would mush it around. Okay. Very okay. good. And I'm gonna wash it around. So. Mm. Okay. Very flavorful gravy. Mmm. It's good. It's a little salty, I think. It's a little. So I would cut back on the McGee. Okay. Or you can take it out altogether and just kind of play around with the salt level. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit salty, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. You can really taste the garlic and the onions. And the vegetables from the broth really mm. come out well. It's nice and smooth, not lumpy. Mm -hmm. I think using the uh, cornstarch was is a good idea for gravy. So I hope you guys give that a try. It's very flavorful. Absolutely. So the next thing we're going to try Ooh. is the corn pudding. So good mm -hmm. luck, babe. You can see this. You can see the sour cream. You can see cream. the sour cream swirled the through cheese. it. Mm. And it smells great. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's mm. good. This is great. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. The flavors it's, are popping. The flavors are really good. Mm. Everything goes together mm -hmm. well. You mm. can taste the butter and the corn together. Mm. You can taste the sour cream. It's really tasty. Mm. I think for those who have watched and tried, and I know it's a lot of you, uh, Susan's mac and cheese recipe, this is kind of like a corn version. You're substituting corn for pasta is great. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Mm -hmm. And there are little bits of onion and garlic in there. I just got a little oh, bit yeah. of garlic. Mm -hmm. They're pockets exploding. And nice. It's a nice taste. Mm. And uh, it's possible that in a minute we're going to get a visitor. <laughs> get away. <laughs> Go away, Clive. Go on. Go Clive, on. we don't, we don't share. <laughs> Clive, you know I don't share food. No. Okay, so see, it's so delicious, even the cats want to eat it. I think Rafe went for the <laughs> stuffing last time, and Clive's going for the corn. Yeah. So you guys, I know that things are looking grim because of COVID. Uh, a lot of people are not going to be getting together with their loved ones for Thanksgiving, and I'm really mm -hmm. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And if you fall into that category, 
hang in there, take good care. And even if it's one or two of you, you can still cook a really nice meal and show your love and appreciation for whoever you're with, okay? Even if you're not with anyone. You can always Zoom or you can always eat first, Zoom later. Do whatever it takes to stay safe and healthy this Thanksgiving season, okay? Because mm -hmm. we definitely want to have you around for next Thanksgiving. Absolutely. And for all the holidays that we're mm -hmm. going to be able to spend together once we get this vaccination and once we get past this COVID sure. crisis, okay? So take good care, everybody. Take good care. Please subscribe, like. If you like what you see, please share. And remember, if you hit the notification bell, mm -hmm. we'll let you know every week when a new, new recipe dropping every week comes down the pike. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned. After this one, we're going to have a lovely cinnamon honey roasted mm -hmm. sweet potato recipe coming right after this one, just in time for Thanksgiving. Okay. Absolutely. Take good care, guys. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.